We went up on the bird on April the 29th, uh, 1978. Our first broadcast was to take a live shot from a group of singers on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. And it was sent uh, on microwave to the uh, uplink uh, that's near Tel Aviv, and it was brought down in New York, then it was fed back up in the air to our earth dish down here, then it was fed out by us on satellite across the country. And it was a big technological thing in those days, and we were just absolutely thrilled that we had now been able to have something that was uh, circling the globe, essentially. And uh, that was the, that was the, the beginning. Uh, initially, we used the, the uh, satellite to uh, transmit our 700 Club in news. And then uh, there was a young man working for Stan Ditchfield. His name was Scott Hessick. And Scott Hessick said, listen, there's all this cable out here. Uh, we might be able to get uh, on cable with a... Uh, a whole package of programs, and I thought, good grief, you know, what's cable? Cable to me was uh, those little antennas up in the mountains. They used to be called CATV, and, and uh, it, it was for rural Pennsylvania. Uh, but he says, no, that we'll have some people that want our programs because we were sending them tapes already. And I said, okay, let's, let's give it a shot. So we took four hours of our religious programs. We had... Uh, the Ross Bagley show that was kind of a, a Christian DJ show where he was he was actually running uh, like MTV he was running uh, videos of uh, religious music. We had a show with a black guy named Don DeGreat. I think we called it Right On. We had <clears throat> a program called Charisma. We had some other teaching. We had. Uh, of course, our 700 Club program. We had uh, other uh, ministers, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, all together we had four hours a day that uh, we rebroadcast six times on a 24 hour. So it was a 24 hour channel and we called it CBN Cable. Our first affiliate was Owensboro, Kentucky, uh, a relatively modest sized town in Kentucky and that, that was where we went on with our cable. But to our amazement, the cable industry was beginning to burgeon around the, the nation and we became the uh, entry point for a number of these cable companies to, to, to sell their service to local communities. They'd say, well, look, we're going to bring you this great religious channel. And they'd say, oh, well, that's a nice thing to do. We'd like to have you on our, uh, give you a license. So we became a pioneer. And what we, we had put up turned out to be the first um, satellite basic cable network in America. Uh, and the response was tremendous. And my man Hessick came to me and he said, uh, he said, we've got five million subscriber households. And uh, he said, I had to double my staff. I hired a secretary. So now there were two of them running our cable network <laughs> instead of one. And uh, it was not too long before we had 10 million and then we had 15 and then we had 20 million uh, uh, people who were tuned in to CBN cable. The same philosophy that we had used in our owned and operated stations looked like it would work on cable. And uh, the problem was to get the uh, film industry to understand the uh, economics of cable. They didn't quite understand it, so it was extremely hard to get programs. They, they didn't know what they were giving up, so they didn't want to give up anything. And uh, we had a guy named Bob Johnson who was, uh, he'd, he had a, uh, broadcasting background from out in the Midwest. I think he he managed some stations out in some of the smaller markets in Illinois. And uh, Bob began negotiating with the, with the film distributors to get what he could get. And again, I think we were back to leave it to Beaver. And uh, then we little by little started getting a few sitcoms and uh, uh, our staple during the, uh, on our own and operated, when I was a kid, I used to go to the, the Westerns. I did 11 cents. I could go to the Lyric Theater and watch uh, Johnny Mac Brown and, and uh, Tex Ritter and all those guys uh, shoot at each other on horseback. And I thought, why not have Saturday afternoon at the Westerns? Well, they had been an enormous hit on our uh, 
on our own and operated station, they, they brought the biggest ratings all week long. I mean, big ratings. Uh, uh, beat the other stations because uh, people, that we just stacked them in from 12 or 1 o'clock on Saturday all day long, one after the other. We had Bonanza, we had Gunsmoke, we had uh, you name it. They're all on there. So we found that the film distributors didn't think very highly of those shows, and so they let us uh, get... Uh, you know the the westerns. Uh, you know we had the Virginian. We had all those shows, and uh, lo and behold, we began to get big numbers on cable too because people liked the westerns. Saturday afternoon at the westerns, um, we had. Of course, during our day, we had our religious programs on, uh, and then uh, it was just catch as catch can. It was sort of a a makeshift to, to get a program day together, but we were able to do that, and little by little to expand the uh, the offering uh, of our of our cable. Well, about that time, uh, my son Tim uh, had finished. Uh, he, he took a seminary course in in, in Boston, and he'd run our uh, operations of our TV station in Boston. It was then. Uh, called WXNE, Channel 25 in Boston, and he came down and, and was put in charge of our cable network. And he began to, to move it very dramatically <coughs> me, uh, into uh, a more of a commercial format, and uh, we increased the sub fees and began to get paid a reasonable fee for our, uh, for our uh, offering from the cable systems. Uh, and we began, we hired the former sales manager from ABC Television to sell commercials in New York, and we opened a, we opened a sales office in New York. And uh, it became a family a network, and uh, along the way we decided, rather than calling it CBN Cable, we'd call it the Family Channel. And so that uh, became very popular, and... That was about 1988? <clears throat> about 1988. And then uh, as the years went by, we, we uh, became more and more sophisticated uh, with uh, the Family Channel. Uh, and the audience grew. The subscriber count grew. We, we were going 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, 50 million households. And it, uh, as cable grew, we grew with it. And uh, so it was a marvelous uh, uh, partnership uh, in this emerging industry. And we became uh, easily one of the top 10 cable networks in America and stayed that way uh, because we were on every offering. Every, every time somebody got a new license, we, the family channel came along. And so it, it, was, a, it was a good deal.